Very warm and fun welcome Monet Cafe visitors and friends. Today we're going to be doing a new underpainting technique that's going to be a lot of fun and this is specifically for pastel painting. I'm going to be using these acrylic inks which are so fun. If you like mixing colors you're going to love this lesson. It's sort of like you know when you do Easter eggs and you know you um, make all the different colors. It's really fun. So let's get started. To begin, I just use regular alcohol that you get at any drugstore. And you can experiment with this about how much alcohol to acrylic ink you want to use. Now I'm going to be putting in, sorry for the focus here, um, some of the Daler Rowney acrylic inks. I'm mixing each one with the alcohol. That other one was a blue. This one's more of an emerald green. I'll put the colors up here so you know what they are. I got a great sale at Michael's or um, took advantage of a great sale. It was buy one, get one. So that's just a regular watercolor brush. You can use whatever you want. You could use a foam brush or whatever just to apply it smoothly. And here I'm just simply pouring in the alcohol into my little plastic tray and I do a pretty terrible job at it. <laughs> I think I'll try that differently next time. But uh, then I just uh, go ahead and put in um, some of the blue I begin with and I shake them up good. I'm not sure if they settle at the bottom too much or not, but I just always, you know, as a good rule of thumb, shake them up anyway. Now you saw I, I actually, when I did this before, I had less alcohol uh, and more acrylic ink. Um, the proportions were a little different, but you can play around with that. I just do a little alcohol and like three or four drops of the acrylic ink. And uh, again, my sloppy pouring job of the alcohol. <laughs> Fortunately, it dries fast and everything's no big deal in my art studio anyway. Um, so I am first I'm using some of the green, uh, the blue, the green, and I think I apply uh, red is the next one I do. And then later I add some of the uh, like a really bright, pretty yellow. Um, and uh, it really makes for a neat effect. Yeah, there's the red. So again, shaky, shake, shake and uh, about three or four drops in there. And now for the fun. This is a piece of U art. It's the letter U, A-R-T, U art sanded paper. I love this paper because it is so durable. You can apply water to it. You can apply obviously acrylic inks. You can apply alcohol, all kinds of wet mediums you can apply to get an underpainting technique. Now if you see this paper, it looks a little wrinkled. It's kind of a scrap piece. Um, many of you know of my situation with my home flooding. We rescued a lot of things as quickly as possible and some of my supplies got a little beat up, but this makes for good practice pieces. You know, you can always recycle and reuse. All I'm doing is using that watercolor brush and simply applying the mixture I already created. I realized this one was a little weaker than one that I experimented with before making this uh, video so I, I just added a little bit more of the the blue acrylic ink to it and uh, I've got it pretty drippy and runny but actually it makes it dry kind of consistently you won't see those stripes as much once it dries because it all just kind of bleeds and blends down so that's uh, one example of just kind of a single color and now I'm going to get into doing some of the different colors and then mixing some of the colors to make some neat effects. And now I'm simply doing the same technique in the green on the um, on the top section there. And you can see it's a little bit more of a, a teal green or a, a turquoisey type of green instead of rather more of an earthy or a warm green. It's a little cooler in the green family. And these uh, acrylic inks come in all kinds of colors and uh, again, I got a, a good deal on them. Michael's had a buy one, get one. And I was actually with a fellow Monet Cafe artist, um, Linda Bishop. We had just toured the Mountain Vision Pastel Company in Tampa. And we hopped on by Michael's for a sale she told me about. And I was able to get some more of these uh, acrylic inks that I really like. Um, as you can see, I just now added more of the green. I, I think I put it in another one of the little plastic holders there. And uh, I was able to not dilute it quite as much so you see the intensity but what this is going to do what is an underpainting why am i doing this and i talk a lot in previous videos about why an underpainting is beneficial uh, in art for one you just get rid of that blank white piece of or creamy colored whatever it is piece of paper and uh, it creates a nice tone and a nice mood you can use a single color like i'm doing here you can um, use these to do a m underpainting that is a complementary underpainting or to emulate more of the local color in your scene so there are various ways that you
you can do this but for me I love setting a mood and uh, oh look at that red I love this if you've watched some more of my videos or previous videos you've seen I love doing complementary underpaintings that just means whatever the opposite to whatever your main subject is whatever is the opposite on the color wheel typically with landscape paintings I do a lot there's lots of greens and blues so on the color wheel the opposite of greens and blues is reds and yellows so it's a great color to put down as an underpainting because it's just going to make your landscape pop more Ooh, this color is the one I love. I would love this one by itself. I wish I'd have done one just with the yellow, but it really makes a nice, warm underpainting when I combine it with this red. And um, again, this uh, UART paper is great for applying any water mediums, but there are some pastel papers you can't. One is Sennelier, Le Carte. Uh, it's a pastel card that uh, you don't want to apply water to. So now you see how pretty, doesn't that look good? It almost reminds me of another underpainting technique I use where I use a quinacridone gold um, and it's made by the Golden uh, product line and it's almost exactly the same color. I'm very excited about this because what's neat about this on UART is acrylic ink and alcohol is not going to take up any of the tooth of your pastel surface. A lot of times things take up the tooth and um, and you only, you're only you limited with how many layers you can get. So now you are unlimited because this doesn't take up any of the tooth of the pastel grit. Now I just combined that blue, I'm sorry, the red to the blue, which we know if you, you know, we don't do as much color mixing in pastel art, but most of us veer in and out of different mediums. You know that the red and the blue make a purple. So I didn't do a great job at this one, but you could blend that one a little better. You see kind of in the middle of where I did that it's getting a nice purple purple tone now I think I get more of the green and I apply oh no I'm sorry I got more of that golden color and guess what happens when you apply it to that turquoise you're gonna get more of that um, lime green yellowy green oh my goodness isn't that beautiful so I would recommend what I did here because it was a scratch piece of paper I just got some mats that were pre-cut for five by seven and I think a Oh, I don't know what that other size was, but I just, you know, put them down there and made the little rectangles. But uh, what I would do is I'd maximize my paper. I'd, I'd come up with the best way. Actually, you kind of, sorry, you do need to do it like this if you're going to be doing different colors because you don't want them bleeding into each other. So you would need to separate them a little bit. But if you're not, if you're doing all one color, like if you were doing that pretty orangey gold down there in the bottom left, you could just divide your, or paint the whole paper and then divide it how you want. Whatever is your most practical size is that you would use now you see how I added that uh, that green over that look at that color oh my goodness isn't this just beautiful so you know lots of possibilities even with just these four colors that I used again this is going to be a really great way to use an underpainting or do an underpainting because you're not going to take up any of the tooth or use up any of the tooth in your pastel paper adding more red to the gold and look at that pretty oh my goodness that's another beautiful color for a complimentary underpainting wow I, I had fun just doing this. <laughs> so uh, you guys try it. And now I'm just going to be doing a little painting where I had already pre-done before I experimented with all this color. Now I'll, I'll actually use some of these more in the future. But I experiment with one of the little teal and, uh, and blue colors to do a little wave scene that was when I was in Belize. So let's get started on that. And here's the little pastel painting I did over this technique. The You'll see in a minute the underneath part of it was more of that teal uh, bluish color. This was just an incoming wave I shot a photo of when I was in Belize. It was such a beautiful place. And I did this painting rather quickly um, just because I was in the experimentation mode. <laughs> These are the pastels I picked out. I kind of have a lot of them there, but I was uh, working in a hurry this day. So let's get started now with our little piece of paper that I used, the UART paper that I have already pre-toned with the acrylic inks and uh, as I've been doing in the past few lessons I like to go ahead and just put my pastels down next to uh, my uh, working surface there so for one you can kind of see I know I've sped this one up some of them aren't quite as fast you kind of see which kind of pastels I'm using if they're big and square they're the Terry Ludwigs if they're a little more round and kind of big they're either Mount Vision or Sennelier I've got some unison that are also round um, if they're a little smaller and round they're Rembrandt's and um, I plan to do I've got some videos about different pastels and papers in the past but I'd like to do another one just going over some of the different pastels 
and give recommendations for good starter sets. I've got a lot of beginners who ask, what's a good starter set? And that would be a neat video for you guys. Okay, so here's my reference image. I've just got a little new pastel, NU pastel, not N-E-W, um, that I use sometimes to sketch with. Um, and it's a good sketching tool because it's harder than some of these other softies. It works better um, for sketching. So I'm going to be really speeding up this video because it's, this uh, lesson was not really about this painting. It was more about the experimentation of using the acrylic inks, but I still thought you might like to see the painting. And um, I love your comments, by the way. Thank you guys for so many useful comments you're giving me that help me to know how to make these videos that help you the best. And uh, some of them I've loved in particular are, somebody just recently said, you know, uh, she said, she or he said, you often say how you're going to be quiet now and play the music. And, and she said, I happen to love hearing what you have to say and like hearing the lessons and the, um, the teaching and the learning from that. So uh, that made me feel good that you guys don't get tired of me jabbering <laughs> on and on like I do. So uh, that's good because I could just keep talking in these if I didn't have other things to do. Um, but uh, anyway, so, but this one is going to be not as much about me giving instruction in this lesson. And uh, I hope, I really hope you enjoyed learning about this technique because I am definitely going to use this in the, in the future. I like to go ahead when I do something like this um, with the underpainting technique and do a lot of them at once because you know the time it takes to get out your acrylic inks, get out your alcohol and if you did that each time you did a painting you're going to be wasting precious painting time um, and sometimes when you're in the mood to paint you're just in the mood to paint or you're like me you have limited time and you've just got to squeeze in painting time you know as you can now I apologize for the jumping around of my camera here I had two little friends that were enjoying playing underneath my tripod while I was trying to film this some of you guys may have seen my videos where I found a rescue kitty you guys were giving me some awesome names for her and I decided to name her dusty I call her dusty girl and she and my dog Jackson were underneath my tripod thinking it was just having a, they were having a great old time playing around, but they kept knocking it over <laughs> or almost knocking it over. I literally had to catch it a couple of times. So I had to ban them from my studio for the moment <laughs> to finish up this little painting. And uh, I'm just having fun with this one. Like I said earlier, this wasn't a very serious piece. Uh, it's kind of small and I was uh, really just playing around with this technique for an underpainting. But I did add, you'll see here, um, some of my, um, uh, iridescent Mount Vision pastels. My last video, I, I used some of these to do um, a little bit of pastel work with these iridescents, and they're fun. You can't really appreciate it in the video, but they really do glimmer and shimmer uh, in the right lighting. And uh, if you move your painting around, you can really see it shimmering. So I thought it'd be fun. I had that pretty turquoise I remembered, uh, bluish, tealish color that um, I thought would be nice in those waves. I also wanted to mention that I don't talk about it a lot every so often in my videos, just the importance of good drawing skills. I know it doesn't appear that I've been drawing in this. I mean, I'm really just working with color and shapes, but none of that would come together if I hadn't practiced a lot of uh, drawing and, um, and trying to get accurate representation of things that I'm trying to paint. I've heard a lot of times people say you don't have to uh, be able to draw to be able to paint, but I don't think that's true at all I know that you're only going to strengthen your painting skills and the beauty of your work uh, By having good core drawing skills. I've got a couple of videos early on where I talk a lot about drawing and good drawing skills Oh, you may have heard my little doggy there and um, I, I really just can't stress it enough I even though I, I like to paint a lot I still try to get my sketchbook out and work on sketching because it's um, it's just key it really is so um, I don't want to belabor that but if you haven't been practicing on drawing skills I would really recommend you uh, try to do that try to do it in a fun way little quick sketches now I'm gonna finish this one up and I have sped this one up quite a bit more than I normally do again the focus was on the underpainting the new technique and not really the painting but I am gonna go ahead and finish this little painting up and um, hopefully you guys even learned from this uh, 
part of the lesson and I am again enjoying your comments so much I thank you so much for how we feel like a family you know I don't feel like I'm alone in this because every time I make a video I truly feel like I'm talking to you guys and especially when I hear back from you so keep those comments coming and if you haven't already joined our Facebook group Monet Cafe Art Group it is a great community we it, it's really unique it's something different I haven't found any group like it on Facebook maybe I'm being prejudiced but anyway so hope you enjoyed this try this yourself please do I know I'm gonna use this technique again and as always happy 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 and blessed painting bye